two, one. I feel like doing it again, but okay, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> do it. I'm not going to do it. I think people are getting do sick it. of it. You know what's crazy? This is the one thing that I know everyone watches is that first bit. Yep. Right? As, so. At least that much. We're, we're still trying to be like super creative. At some point, I think we will. But right now... Uh, <laughs> We're too serious. We're too serious. We're still trying to. Once you get comfortable with it and you kind of come loose. I think at some point you'll find your groove and kind of your own little creative touch to it. I'm sure we will. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Marwan. We've been talking about it for a while. For quite a while. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. Really, really excited to have you on. It's quite a good conversation, man, about. I'm pissed off, man. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) Tell me. Right to it. weather. Huh? This weather, uh, every, it's gross. It's gross. every year, every year, you forget how hot and <laughs> uninhabitable, habitable, 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 habitable. Yeah. whatever. <laughs> it's disgusting, man. You shouldn't, humans shouldn't be living in this kind no, of, it's the, disgusting. The problem is we got ripped off this year because the That's really true. nice part of the weather, we missed That's it. True. That's true. We got stuck inside. Well, we got, it. we got a little bit of the, the outdoors, the gazebo is kind of good. Sorry for my rant. <laughs> no, no, it's fair. It's a fair thing. It's a, it's a definitely our region problem. You know, when I was in Canada, people used to ask me outside of Canada, how do you get used to the cold? And I always used to say, you don't get used to it. You just live with it. But I'll take the cold. Seriously? Are you yeah, a I'm Marwan? A- Sorry, guys. Hold up. You know what? Before we do this, and I'm down for this rant. We have to introduce Marwan. We well, gotta give you know. Right, go we, gotta, we gotta do it. Right? I don't steal your thunder or his thunder. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my rant. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to the weather because I want to talk about. Yeah, that. no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. More importantly, I'm still learning some basic, uh, proper social norms of conversation. So it's a, it's a work in progress. But no, Marwan is here. The reason why Marwan is here is Marwan has, I think, one of, like a, a super brilliant concept and uh it's starting to roll out we're seeing it you and your competitors it's there right yep. uh, and the current situation kind of pushed it into it so i thought it was uh it'd be cool to to kind of see how it is to do a startup in the middle of this world that we're living in during a crisis yeah it's uh, it was definitely a challenge kind of trying to figure out if you're going to survive during a, a you know a crisis but if you look at every crisis it brought out the big startups well this is it that's it. Yeah, that creates it. So, opportunity. So hold exactly. up. Um, look at this. I'm switching back. So the weather. <laughs> Sorry, let's, I forgot. What was I talking let's about? Get, let's get. <laughs> you prefer the cold. So cold to heat. Which one are you? Initially, I would have said the cold because, you know, you can always put something on. In the heat, you get down to skin. And that's it. That's what I'm saying. However, your body does kind of get used to it. I would still go with the cold, I think, at the end. As long as you have, you know, everything underground. And if all my life, I'll prefer the heat. I've reached the point. Maybe I'm getting older. Maybe it's becoming a hassle to live in this weather for me, but mm. cold is cleaner. It's it's much cleaner. Yeah. You just, yeah so this is this is what I was gonna say. Is it like my problem with heat and cold is not with the the force of nature, which is the heat or the cold. It's with the result of it, right? So and, and my beef with heat is the sweating thing. It's yeah. annoying. You feel dirty. I gotta yeah. take three showers a day. Yeah. You go to the gym in the morning, you're sweating, you get out, you take a shower, you go out, you sweat immediately. You feel like, you know, what the hell's going on? No, and, and your energy level, you're a lot more tired in hot, humid weather yep. than in the cold. In the cold, you go outside, you're full of it, energy. It wakes Boom. you up. Boom. Boom. It wakes you Boom. up. Kicking the ass. My, my issue Sprinting. with the weather in Canada was the fact in winter, four o'clock, it's dark. That I That's agree depressing. with. But That's other than that, so I like you say it. That. Wakes you up. Funny you say that. Like the, my last days before I left Canada to come to the Middle East, this is the number one complaint I had for myself. Like people used to ask me, you wake up, you go to work. It's pitch dark, not, not yeah. sunrise, yeah. dark. You come back dark again. It's quite impressive that you would imagine with a problem like that, that they'd have like a serious, like a high suicide rate. Cause I think there's like some sort of association of happiness to sun. There but must there be is some winter. ratio. Winter suicides go up. Is that, is that, I, I, somebody was, well, debunking the, that. There's a couple of things that if you look at it. There is the fact that, you know, you're not getting as much sun and you kind of endure a lot more. So if you're on your own, you don't have the family and, it, you know, it's it's a uh, holiday season, it's Christmas and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of depression happens around that time. Mm. But there is depression associated with the sun. You're not getting enough light. You're not getting true, enough true. Uh, I'm with melatonin you. and all that. But stuff. remember, like people used to say, I think it was Finland or one of those Scandinavian countries mm. where the su- rate of suicide is much higher due to that. They, they used to say that it was contributed to the lack of sun. 
Well, that's I, what I'm saying. That's why there must be some well, sort I, of yeah, ratio. Finland has their own issue. This is the only country when they said, okay, you have to have two meters distance between Corona. They said, that's not enough. You know, <laughs> they already have four meters between them. <laughs> have you have ever looked at a picture of them standing and waiting for the bus? You can no, fit a car like a mile person. away from each other. This is they don't Corona. Like, not no, 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 pre, normally. Pre, <laughs> they don't wow. like standing next to each other. Personal space is critical. I wonder there. why. Is it just personal space or hygiene or? I don't know. It's interesting. Culture, you'd imagine. Yeah. Somewhere along the I way. I like that. See, <laughs> I, I, I want some of that it's space. It's great to have that space, <laughs> unlike here when you're standing at the bank and doing personal details and, and somebody's right They're breathing, here. They're breathing on your neck. Yeah. I can give you my PIN number if you want. <laughs> exactly. like, I've actually I'm said that before. I'm just trying to pull money out of the bank machine. I'm sure we've all had that experience. Yeah, 100, I'm not the only one. 150%. 150%. <laughs> yeah, he looks at you like, what's the problem? <laughs> like, really? Yeah. Yeah, so cold weather? I say that now because I'm suffering through the heat, but I don't know. Look, the body does get used to it. I remember when I first came here and we went out New Year's uh, Eve and four o'clock in the morning, we're all out went, uh, to eat. Everyone was about 15 degrees. Everyone was cold wearing jackets. I just came from Canada. I'm like, this is beautiful weather. Yeah, You know, exactly. I'm wearing a t-shirt. Mm. Went back to Canada about three years later. In the fall, it was 15 degrees, 10 degrees. Freezing. I'm freezing yeah. and all my friends are laughing. At yeah, you. exactly. Your, your body, body gets used to it. It's true, it's true. Yeah, you remember like patio season? It's like the first time it goes double digits. Patio season starts, guys. Ten degree is yeah. not patio weather. Like I don't know, they're just it's just you're excited. You spend five months cooped up it's in the, the house. Lack yeah, of vitamin you just D. Go out. You know? yeah. But it's funny that people here suffer more from lack of uh, vitamin D. Which is too hot. You don't go out. Exactly. That's a yeah. surprising pro problem. That I think our region per capita mm. has a, a pretty high percentage of vitamin D deficiency in relation to a whole lot of other countries, which is kind of weird. We live in the desert. Interesting. See a lot of sun. Well, look, there's also the issue. Or you hide from it. If you're talking this about this it. region, you know, we're, we're supposed to be tanned, right? So we don't absorb light yeah. as easily. And the fact that we don't stay outside as much as we used to, it's worse for us. If you're, you know, pale white, you're going to create the vitamin D very quickly. You just go outside for five minutes and it's done. For us, we have to sit outside for a while. We need to do that. We need to get some sun. I've been doing that. Good. You've been doing that. I've been not. I, I've been not. It's <laughs> not even proper. It's not even proper grammar. By the way, our not. English sucks. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think it's being it's in heat. this region, it's the heat. Heat. Ah. <laughs> no, no, it's this region. You cannot dumb down your English to make sure everyone can understand you. That's what it is. Yeah. Exactly. That's what it is. It's it's adjusting to the to the norm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> adjusting to the norm. The new norm. I like it. So, how many more people can we insult in in that like, five minute segment? <laughs> Oh, uh, so yeah, so, so <laughs> crazy. So we're talking about like, like I said, we had a, a venture capitalist. I keep saying, is that, is that the right word? Venture capitalist? Capitalist, right? Well, as a person that functions yeah. in a venture capital. He's a VC. He's a VC. He's a venture yeah. capitalist. Yeah. Okay. So the yeah. Capitalist is just, so it's interesting. Money. We were on the other side and seeing about investment, whatever. So now we're coming to the opposite side, right? Which is you've come and I think it deserves a little bit of. It's such a brilliant idea. And to be fair to it, like Marwan, you had this idea pre all this mess. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, just like what's that experience now, man? You tried you're, you're in the process of setting up. I think it's a brilliant idea. Shh. Shouldn't that? we tell them what the idea what the, is? Well, he's I'm, I'm giving him I'm building it up, man. I'm building it up slowly. All right. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's not part of the job to listen, right? Just look pretty. <laughs> when we decide on this already? <laughs> Hang on. Is, is, it, is his headphone plugged in? Dude, don't scare me. <laughs> we had that issue. We had that issue recently. We've had every issue, every issue possible. So yeah, so like, um, give us like, just kind of introduce, I've spoken about it to be fair. A few of the podcasts I've actually brought up and spoke about the idea, especially when we had Chef Roberto on. Um, but yeah, so just walk us through Opala. Yeah. Please. So a little bit of history. We actually came up with the idea for Opala towards end of September last year. We had our first pilot in December. And the way it came to be was me and my partner, we go to this coffee shop. We love sitting there and working. But if you sit on the mezzanine level, they can't see you. So mm. you don't always get served, right? The other issue, because we're regular, is when the staff does come to see us, you place an order and you sit there talking for 10 minutes. So that order is just sitting with them, having gone to the kitchen or down to the coffee bar. So we thought, okay, there has to be a better solution for this, a way we can help them. Because their solution was hire someone to stand at the top of the stairs who does nothing else but wait, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a cost center. That person can't move, can't make coffee, can't clean. He's just standing there. So we sat there thinking about it and we came up with an idea, went back to the coffee shop and said, look, mm -hmm. if we build this, 
can we try it out here? And they said, yeah. Within the first week where we had it up and running, that person they hired is now downstairs roasting coffee for their wholesale business. Service went up, the number of orders went up. And, you know, customers and the business liked it. And we said, okay, there's a lot of potential here. Yeah. It was, we saw a need and technology solved it, where a lot of the businesses, they have a technology and like, okay, where can I Fit it retrofit in. it? Yeah, right? exactly. and, and that's a problem. And we noticed, okay, so for coffee shops, for bars, for hotels, for beaches, anywhere where you need to improve service. Yeah. And that's how it started. So we started with a pilot in, t- in uh, December, another pilot in January. And just as a, as a basic background of the technology itself. So what are you doing? What are you offering? What are you serving? So what it does, it's, we call it a smart service solution. Um, it allows people to kind of place orders and have as much control as they want of their service through their mobile phone. There's no hardware, no apps, nothing to download. Okay. You come into any venue, we have tags that are sitting on the table. You take out your own phone, you either scan the QR or you tap it because we have NFC built into it. Yeah. And the menu pops up. The menu is very dynamic and it's live. There's nothing to download. It's cloud-based. It goes on your browser. That's amazing. Because I hate those apps, guys. I Oh, man. When anyone tries to get you, I have a, you already have a million exactly. apps. The last thing you want is to add to it. The problem with apps is, one, people are kind of getting sick of downloading apps, right? You're only going to download something that takes up real estate on your phone if you use it on a regular basis. And if it's just for one venue, I'm not going to do it. If I'm a tourist, I'm not going to download an app if your coffee shop or your hotel yeah. or your bar. Data security as well. It, exactly. And the companies that do run apps, they keep that data. Mm. The venue isn't getting any of it, any of it so we're getting, they're getting pissed off at it. And we keep it private. We don't collect any information. We, mm. we don't even need to know who you are to be able to say, okay, we know this phone placed an order. We know this phone moved to another table. So the menu itself, when you get it, is fully dynamic. It's ver- you have a full CMS. If you know happy hour comes along, happy hour prices change, and you have a happy hour section. When it's over, that goes away. Uh, you know, uh, you can do like a soup of the day. Exactly, you, you can pre-schedule things. So one of the venues that we have, one of the hotels, they know there are you know a lot of people partying and go back to that hotel, and the type of food people eat after 11 o'clock in the room there are 15, 20 people is very limited. So mm. they don't want to keep the full kitchen open. Of course. We switch the menu automatically at 11 o'clock. This is the menu that's available. And they love the fact they're able to do this. You're able to also call staff. So if you want that personal touch, that personal server, so you can call the waiter, you can yeah. actually tell them what you want. So we have a beach, for example. Mm. If you're sitting two kilometers down on the beach, it's a big beach, and you want to kind of get them, yeah. somebody's yeah, attention. It's the worst thing They ever. come to you and you say, okay, I want ice. And they have to go all the way back. With us, you just kind of go on the, uh, open your phone, tap, I'd like some ice, and they bring it to you. It's a lot faster. Mm. But paying the bill. So one of our customers, he became a customer when he saw this live somewhere else and call, called us because he had an experience where he went out, I won't say where, but somewhere in Dubai, very fancy. It, it is a club by the beach as well. About 10 of them. They spent the whole day. They're eating, drinking, everything. When they asked for the bill, they waited two hours. What? Two hours. And they eventually got up and walked away. Now, if you think 10, 11 people eating and drinking all day, that's not a small bill. And they, they tried to give them a chance. Two hours, they waited and they walked away. With us, you can actually either call for someone to come or pay directly through the platform. Well, that's, I think, the big thing, right? You can pay directly through the platform. So, I know for me, I always look at it like it's like Uber Eats or Deliveroo, right? You're just, you've removed that element of, you know, you can see what the food looks like. So, you've got the menu and you can order, you can interact, you can pay, which I think is the biggest thing, right? Like, So I, I wouldn't place this with Uber Eats and Deliveroo and all the rest at, at the moment because there's a big kind of blowback that's happening against them. And we'll talk about this a little bit later on. Because of how the percentages and Because whatever. of how they're charging th- these, these venues during the hard times. You know, the mm-hmm. venues are giving people discounts as they can stay alive and they're taking the majority of the profits. So they're not making any money. They're actually hemorrhaging money. Wow. Instead of trying, we're going to help you. What we've actually done, we've went to a venue and said, okay, if you need help during this period, use the platform for free until you get back on your feet. We're not going to commit to anything. right? That's really cool. And what a lot of venues say, okay, this helps me lower my overhead, increase orders, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to keep it. But that's that's completely up to you. We're trying to help. These guys are saying, oh, no, they need us now more than ever. So let's kind of can mm, I screw them up. Let's milk it. Monopolize it. Exactly. That's not cool, man. There's got to be an element of morale look, in look, this, it, no? it's, it's still expensive for them. To, to be fair, it is expensive to run That's, these kind of aggregators and stuff like this. But is yeah. it? Is it? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look. I'm going to challenge that. Is it? it to, none of them are really making money. Zomato, How can from they what not I, be last I heard, money? they're kind of making money. But Uber Eats closed down for what? Because no, but that's not, related to the acquisition, right? Kareem, right? It's, it's no, but it's become Kareem Eats. You so still Kareem order. already had their own version. Yeah. But they said, okay, we're, we're not making enough money off this. Let's just kind of run it off one of them. So I think till about 
and don't you know don't quote me on this but i think talabat only been quoted matter. that's <laughs> it yeah. you're, you're committed to this there's no coming back from nah, it's not <laughs> talabat owns the matter here the matter owns uber eats in india they're kind of all buying each other in different kind of locations yeah. From last time I read, I think here was the only place that matter was kind of making money, but the rest of the world they really weren't. But did they handle the logistics? I, was, I think that's the problem. Th that's the issue. Right? It's that last mile. That's the issue. Yeah. Well, it's that's the, that's the, the thing. Logistics. Like they don't, they just own the platform and they disperse the order to a third party. That no, they, they do it themselves. They do. The, there oh, are companies now that do their own delivery. Which they just is, do delivery and nothing else. So you call them when you need to. Yeah. But most of these will do the delivery themselves. So the Talabat delivery guy is working for Talabat. Yes. Yeah. And the problem is they'll charge you. Seven dirhams for the delivery, and then they will charge the venue, you know, thirty-five percent. That's more than the restaurants making. Exactly. Well, look, I. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just trying to think this through because <laughs> I'm end like, of the day. no, because I think all Uber and Uber Eats and all Talabat have to do is just get out of the the logistics game, right? So just get out of the logistics game, set the software, get the restaurants that want to work with you to do the delivery themselves and just be a little bit more fair on the percentage, right? I think that's really what it comes down to. I mean, their idea is we're helping to get you business that you wouldn't have otherwise from outside, right? Absolutely. Mm. But at the same time, you're getting all these other restaurants that compete with you. And now you're going to say, okay, even though I want Indian and you're right next door to me, this person is paying me more, even though he's, you know, 15 kilometers further and they're going to show up before you. So there's also that other issue. It's not just I'm giving a percentage. Now I have to pay you to market me to make sure I show up in, in, in the listing. But Sinta, your, your, uh, your business model is completely different. That's why it's not comparable to the Completely to the different. And we don't charge these kind of percentages yeah. as well either. Yeah. We actually work with you. We focus on in-venue delivery. Yeah. So we actually do, whether it's a bar, it's a restaurant, it's a hotel. So where we're seeing a lot of the growth is in the hotel area. We're doing room service. We're doing pool and beach. We're doing restaurants, all that kind of stuff. The hotels, it makes sense. They have a lot of things that are happening internally and they want to deliver and within a certain area. Um, but we're also now discussions kind of going into stadiums and all these other areas. Anywhere where there's F and B and, you know, with stadiums, if I get up and go to try and pick up something, I'm going to miss half the game, you know, That's 20, it. 30 minute waits, right? Yeah. Now we can do it where from your seat, we can deliver to your seat because we know exactly where you are. Or you get a ticket number when you place an order. When it's ready, you get a notification, you go pick it up. If you go pick it up, there's a special queue for you. That's a five minute wait, right? Yeah. Just to get there and come back instead of 25 minutes. And I'm missing a lot of the game or the show. I and mean, we were just, I was just, we were talking about this because Leith uh, is debating, right? Right? No? <laughs> what am I debating? We're talking about the Raptors and the ability to watch them again, right? So, ah, yeah. yeah. So I was there, I was just there and I obviously was very conscious of it, right? Because we had spoken at that time yeah. about the idea. So it was in February before the whole world collapsed. So I was there for the Ra Raptors game and the Maple Leafs game in Toronto. And I noticed that it was the same problem. It's an app. Like, and I was like, I wish they just had a QR code yep. and you could just deal with it. But instead you have to upload an app. You have to register your name. You have to do all this nonsense. And it's just like, it was really, really frustrating. So you want to make it as easy as possible for people. You know, we don't require that you log in and register. If you want to, that's great. You start getting different features and, and benefits and discounts and we can start making recommendations, but you don't have to. You know, we can, if you come into a bar and you sit down on one table, place an order, go to another table, place an order. We know it's still you because of the phone, right? We're not tracking anything about you, but this phone is placed this order and that order. The moment you're out of there and you paid your bill, we don't follow you. So we keep the privacy. If you decide to log in with us, mm. we're going to give you benefit. But again, we're not trying to sell your information. So that's a big difference between us and the other places. We're not collecting information to be able to resell it afterwards. Well, that's, okay. well, but now I'm, I'm seeing a lot of different places are doing it well they're half doing it a lot of them are doing the qr that goes to a pdf i've seen a venue where you scan the qr it goes to a website have to find the link for the pdf open the pdf or you get a pdf of their actual menu which is this big and you have to zoom in into your phone and try and find yeah, it's not the actual it's not it, a dynamic it, exactly or solution. some of them will have it you know kind of like okay it is an html but th that's it you can't make any changes with other words if a venue runs out of you know let's say avocado click a button the avocado items are off the menu automatically. Click it again, it's back once you have it. You know, there is nothing dynamic. They can change prices. One of the venues we're in right now is like, oh, great. Now what I can do is at five o'clock, my cakes and my muffins and all that, I can put them half off automatically because I'm about to close soon and I just want to get rid of them. Yeah. You can't do that with a PDF. You can't do that with a non-dynamic. Um, the other places also, it's like, you got to figure out where I'm sitting and they don't have POS integration. We can actually plug into almost most POSs out there. Uh, which is something critical. You can run it off a browser or you can plug into a POS uh, depending on the venue. 
point of sale. Yeah. So that's the ability to do the actual interaction with the local system. That's exactly. So you place the order, it automatically goes to the kitchen right away, it gets printed in the kitchen. They prepare your order and they bring it to you. Uh, if you want to do it through a browser, it goes sort of like a cashier who puts it into a POS system. And now how you guys are going, right? So I, I seen an ad for Zabil House. Yeah. Uh, they surprised us with that. We we had nothing to do with it. We just kind of edited the ending a little bit and made it a bit shorter. But we went to the Abil house. You know, when we were actually sitting in Lala's trying to finalize uh, the agreement when they got the order to shut down. Like we were sitting there and they started pulling chairs off the bar, saying, "Sorry, we have to shut down." Oh wow! So when they knew they were about to open, they called us back because they couldn't open with full staff, thirty percent. And how are you going to give that kind of service with this? Doesn't matter if you have one person or like one of the venues, which is actually a beach. They went from needing six people during the peak to service the beach down to two with oh, the same no. amount of service, right? Um, so they called us back and we, we implemented the system. We put it up and running. And next thing we know, they, they surprised us with the video. Well, that's really cool. It's something they had to do to show, look, we are compliant with the contact list, with that, all the COVID regulations and all that kind of stuff. So in the grand scheme of things, you would, you would imagine that COVID actually created a, a new opportunity. It, for it created you. A, a, you know, a bigger demand where before... The point of this was we're going to help you increase sales and reduce your overhead. Now it was, okay, I need to have this to kind of make sure it's contactless. Like again, right. so we're working with Nikki Beach mm. and Nikki Beach initially was a discussion just to do Dubai. When COVID hit, they came back to us, okay, we need to do all of it. They don't have any more printed menus anymore. So inside the rooms, inside their beach, everything, it's all gone. Because every time somebody touches it, they you have to disinfect it. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's a cost. But even if you take COVID out of it, we've seen venues where they have really nice menus. We're talking each menu is about 35, 40 dirham kind of thing. We've seen spelling mistakes. We've seen price mistakes. We've seen, so you have to reprint. They change an item. What are you going to do with it? With ours, you just go in the system. It's like two seconds. It's live. It's done. So there is a printing cost that's, that's gone. There is the environmental cost that's gone. And every time somebody goes into a room, whether they touch your menu or not, you have to clean it. That's gone. It's pretty wild because it even solves the, the iPad. I think I seen that was a big thing in Toronto, especially the the like sushi places, all you yeah. can eat sushi, whatever. You have a menu on essentially, like you said, like a iPad, basically. But if somebody drops that, that's a cost. Well, this is if it. The battery is dead. That's we've been actually in a place here where they had iPads. And while we're using it, they came to us. Sorry, we need to, you know, give it to somebody else because they don't have enough for everybody. Else in there. <laughs> so it's a, it, it's a bit of a problem. I haven't, I haven't finished my order yet. Exactly. And here, everybody have their, has a phone with them. Some people two or three phones. So you never have that problem. And I'm touching my own phone. I'm not touching an iPad that I don't know how many people have touched. Wow. Yeah, it's man. very interesting. It, it just my mind goes to to, to how the solution can ex get expanded and expanded into different different ways. Um, you can add promotion codes, you can add, there's, the, the list goes on so and on. There's a few things that we're actually working at the moment, which I don't know if I should mention it, uh, but <laughs> think anything, about it. The, the, a lot of stuff that's happening with an f &B that we can kind of come in and improve on or simplify and get rid of a lot of the, the hard work, you know, where you needed hardware before to kind of place orders, we can get rid of that completely. You know, one of our tags, it, you know, if you're talking about a screen, I can use only I can use the screen. People behind me can't do that at the same time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can have one tag and 100 people can be scanning it and using it at the same time. So you don't have that cost anymore. But do you see, do you see issues with payments? So complications at the end of the night, multiple people sharing bills. Like, have you guys thought of that? No, no, no. Because again, it it, it, even if it's one tag and all of us, you know, scan that and place an order, your order is yours, my order is mine. They don't get mixed up. Because it's, it's your phone, to mix up, right? It's, it's your phone. It's my phone. They're very different. Yeah, but who's so who's going? Who's coming to to collect the bill or to finalize the table? So in the, in, in traditional ways, we order whatever. One bill comes to the table, and we share payment, or somebody so has to close. This it. you get an individual bill that you can pay. Who decides when that happens? Okay, the three of us sitting on a table. You have to leave early. Mm. Usually, what you do is say, "I need the bill." Oh, what did you have? Okay, let me try and go. They go back into the system. Okay, can I pull this out? Did he have this or did they have this? Or is it joint? With this, when you ask for your bill or you pay through the platform, you paid for your stuff and that's it. You pay and you walk out. You don't have to worry about who had what. No, no, I understand the concept. It's just the logistics of it. But that's it. That's a logistic. You paid and you walk out. There's no that's logistics. Because your phone knows what you ordered. Yeah. Or you can say, I want to pay for the table. That's, you know, that's a... So what's really fun... In, in, the, in North America, you have apps just for splitting the bill. That's a feature that's built in with us. It's automatic. Yeah. So what we realized we need to do for here is the exact opposite. Because when you get Arabs are on the table, they're fighting as who's going to pay the bill. 
So we're adding that feature as in, okay, I want to pay for the entire table. Okay, okay that's, or you that's... can just be the central order taker. E exactly. Well, even if it's nice to let everyone kind of do the order themselves, but then you can just say, okay, I'm paying for the whole table. Okay, I got you. Yep. Yeah, that yeah, that solves it. Yep. Well, you think that's an issue? I think opposite, man, that solves so much issues, so much problems. All the times that you go, birthdays, whatever, multiple tables, people are, you know, moving around. You want to bounce? You want to pay? You don't know who's... Yeah, the issue, the issue of... That central, that suffering. It's the same issue with the, no. with the traditional... No, but that's but, suffering. No, it's not the same issue. The suffering of getting the bill when you're in a big group. You yeah, know that experience. Out who had one. How much is it? Hold up. How much did you? Pay? Well, I only, I only got this. I only got that, and then everyone sits there like. And let's face it, you, you know, you pay for yourself. If there's a group of ten people go out, four of them will sit there, you know, polish off a bottle of whiskey. The other three, or you know, what are six people didn't have anything to drink. Come and split the bill. Well, fifty percent of it is just alcohol. Is it really fair to do that? And that's a lot of, it's a big issue. That's here. what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean. The, the, but with this. Thought, it sounds like you've thought of exactly, that's every, already every combination possible. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, man. It's weird. Like, do you so, feel, like, I'm trying to think, like, are people, like, are companies or are these restaurants now going to be able to, like, they're going to operate on less staff now, right? Well, and they kind of have to, what people don't get about restaurants specifically, the margins are very small. Of course. You know, they have high overhead and they can't charge a lot because people won't pop. It's really weird. If you say about food and you're like, okay, I'm going to pay 15% more than I would if I did it myself, but it tastes a lot better in the better environment. You're like, no, no, that's too much. However, you will pay 200% more for alcohol and you have no issue with that. Sure. So if you're talking about a bar, they make money, but restaurants operate in very small margins. And this really showed the fact that, you know, if, if something goes wrong, they can't survive for very long. Yeah. And the, well, look, I think it's just, it's, it's a tough one now because the concept of a restaurant and a public place is kind of counterintuitive to the, but I, although I've heard things are back to normal, right? Yeah. Busy. Yeah. A lot of places booked, are. Booked packed, places. Packed, yeah. yeah. I was here. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Are you going out? Well, I go to meetings and stuff like that. No, no. But are and, you and like, no, I, ha I haven't been out, out, but you know, me going to my meetings is going to bars and restaurants and stuff like that. Oh, That's there what you I'm go. Sitting with. So, so <laughs> we're seeing how busy it is. Fair. No, it's crazy. Is it? Cause I was, I don't know who I was talking to. Yesterday, the day before, and we were talking about uh, they went out with their friends and they were like, it was fully booked in this place, it was fully booked in this other place. Yep. And then, they, so no, people yeah. want to get out, people kind of yeah. miss that's, socializing that's what it is. Yeah. and spending money, surprisingly. People just want to actually say, because you know, online ordering went up. I'm not talking just about food, people are bored, so they shop, but they want to go out and kind of feel they had an experience. And that's what restaurants and bars and stuff give you. It's not about I can eat at home. I can order for for takeout, but yeah. the experience, the environment, the sitting down with people, that is critical. And you're not going to get that from delivery. So now you, you're, your team now, you have a, how are you guys tackling the market? You guys are coming through. So we're actually, we are starting to grow at the moment. We we just closed uh, around. Uh, we had a, we expanded the round a little bit because we wanted to uh, you know hire a few more people and expand some features that I mean, we had features you know for nine months down the line but we're seeing a lot of potential for it right now and the demands we said okay let's kind of finish them at the moment but we closed this round and uh, we should be good till towards the end of the year and go for a proper round amazing. but it's we're trying to do everything you know try and overload all of us as much as possible and, and keep that money going, keep building yeah. new features and of course, and, of course. But we're surprised by the traction we're getting that within the region. We had a call last week with uh, Hungary. We have interest from Bul uh, from Bulgaria. We have interest from the UK. We might actually be uh, have our first bar in the UK next week. We're just kind of finalizing discussions with them at the moment. What's nice about it is it doesn't matter where you where you are. The, yeah. the whole thing is cloud based. We can set it up for you remotely, and you're up and running. And the bars can just print these QR codes or. Yeah, we, we can send up. So we, we're quite unique in the way we do our QR codes because we identify where you are as well. We generate them and we send them to you uh, or we can help you with them. The design can be completely up to the, the hotel or the, or the venue yeah. or we can do something for you. It's not an issue. We help, we help you with that. This is the cool thing about tech, man, that we were talking in the last episode is, is the scalability yep. of it. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah, when we were talking to the VC, that's what he was saying, right? That one of the things why VCs always tend to kind of uh, head towards or always look to investments around tech stuff is because of the scalability. You're not dealing with logistics or supply chain or storing or warehousing. So it gives them a big advantage. So they see potential to just blow it up. What's, you know, I was talking with a friend of mine, uh, actually two days ago about the whole kind of tech boom and every startup now saying I'm tech, I'm tech. And I think there's an issue. People are confusing 
I use technology for something versus I'm an actual tech company, right? Yeah, exactly. It, you know, Uber is no longer a tech company. Uber, Uber is a logistics company. I, I'm a taxi, basically, at the end of the day. The money comes from moving people around. Yeah, but they don't physically own the taxi, right? I, I agree. So, but if they don't move people around, if there's people aren't being dropped off somewhere, they're not generating any money itself. The tech facilitates it, but it's not driven by the yeah, tech, right? Yeah. You know, online banks is still a, still a bank at the end of the day. The tech helps them become, you know, decentralized and they don't need a lot of overhead and give you a lot of benefits. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where you got to realize, okay, are you a tech company reading and giving a solution that can apply for everybody? Or are you a bank that uses technology to kind of improve the, uh, you know. So now would you consider, are you a, a tech company? So in this so, regard, you're not. So at the end of the day, we, we, we are a software. We are. Yeah, they are. We they are. are technology They're for products. Airbnb and hospitality. Correct. But it's similar to the Uber. No. Their outcome, their outcome is a technology solution for the restaurant business. So the yeah. restaurant and what's is the Uber solution. The Uber solution for you, for the end user, is get me from this point to for that point. For the end user and his application is also we send me my food so that I'm physically. He, out he, he's right in the fact that Uber doesn't own the taxis and doesn't, uh, you know. The, the drivers for Uber aren't hired by Uber, right? They're, they're technically freelancers. Yeah. So in that case, we're just a software that connects all of them. No, but, but his, the reality his end is... end customer is not the guy eating... Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. His end customer is not the guy eating the food. Exactly. His end customer is the restaurant that's serving the food. Yeah. Okay. Where that's Uber, without that end guy, doesn't make any money. Uber, you're dealing you. with, Uber's dealing you. with Namir. He's okay, not okay, dealing okay, with okay. Namir. I got you. So it's that B2B rather than the B2C. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, our core is B2B. Eventually, we'll be kind of doing offers for B2C. But our core and our focus is really the B2B to help them do a better experience and better service for their, for their customers. You know, we're not trying to be the Uber where they think of Uber. Because now when you want to book, are you booking Kirim? Are you booking Uber? Are you booking Lyft? You're thinking of a brand, right? Yeah. We don't want to replace the restaurant or the venue with, with our name. We're there to help you. Wow. And you're seeing, are there a lot of competition now, I'm assuming? Now. I mean, you have a lot of people who are trying to pivot into this. A lot of people say, okay, look, my, my business is suffering. There's a potential there, but they're not doing it very well. So again, that, the place in London, we were actually talking with them uh, a while back. They reached out and then they came up and said, okay, we, there's a solution here for people who already work with. They want to implement it. So fine. Okay. They're, you're already working with them. You're doing some other stuff with them, logistic internally. Yeah, just, That's fine. They just came back to us two days ago saying, okay, it's absolute crap. They tried to rush it. We didn't force this technology because of COVID. This is something we already had. Well, this is it exactly, which is crazy, right? Again, is that you had already developed this and kind of. Yeah. And you have, you know, talking about tablets, there's companies who sell these tablets for menus, right? Their money is really because of hardware. Mm. Because now people don't want to be touching the hardware, they try to do this pivot. But they use this pivot as they're not thinking long term, this is going to be my business. So they're not doing it very well. They're still depending on an old technology that needs hardware. They're not integrating and they're charging you too much. Because they're thinking, well, I'm selling the hardware for so much money. Yeah. Now to kind of cut it back, now to be able to give this. Yeah. So the solution mm -hmm. isn't uh, doesn't work very well. It's a horrible experience at the end of the day. It's exactly the same issue I'm running in my, yeah. in my field. Yeah, You have all these companies coming up saying COVID solutions, COVID solutions. Like, well, none of it is tested or proven to work. It's a case by case when you yeah. actually seek to speak to these companies. None of them have a complete solution. And the only ones that actually have something that works is something that's already been developed from before. Oh, exactly. And it adapts to COVID and then after COVID, once there's a vaccine. Yeah. And I think in your situation, it's, it's you know. It's, it's a it's, sensible thing. I mean, the idea of it, take out that equation. I think it's an evolution in the interaction of a restaurant. It's just, I feel it's a much more efficient Look, unfortunately, unfortunately, we live at a time where people are trying less and less interaction with people, right? Like we, we, anytime you tell me I can order a pizza and call and speak to someone physically, or I can press a few buttons and get, the, press. And get the same result, I'd rather press. Yep. And unfortunately, this is where it's going. And I think it's a solution that... But it, are, are you looking to, maybe this is later on, to expand your, your this concept beyond restaurant business? Like, have you thought of other applications, i.e., I go into a big grocery store. There is not a single product in the aisles. They're basically just pictures of the different products and so, I'm just scanning. And then what, you pick it up at the end? And you pick it up at What's the actually end. interesting, when QR codes first started, you know, everyone tried to kind of use QR codes because it was a new technology and it was fun. And that's what, you know, there was a technology to try and find a solution for it. And I hated it, uh, you know. But then there's a, I think it was in Korea, the best use of QR I've seen up to up until now 
basically they this supermarket chain, which was number two in the country, they just didn't have the, the, the their competition had more uh, more space, more more stores, right? So they came up with this idea where you in the metro while you're waiting, they actually printed their items. They stuck them on the wall and under each item with a QR code. You scan, you place an order, and by the time you got home, it was delivered to you. So all of a sudden, they had more locations than their competition, and they mm. had more orders. Yeah, that yeah. was a brilliant use of the QR code, right? That's genius. Yeah. But there's still something to be said about going and looking at items. But that's the and thing. People what go problem out. are we solving by doing that? You know, this exactly. Is, this is what we have to think what, about. What we tell a lot of the venues, we're not coming here to kind of tra- change the way you work. We want to enhance the way you work, right? We want to make it better. We want to make it easier. And we want to try and improve things on, on the end user as well. Where a lot of venues initially, when we start talking with them, like, no, no, we like the, the human touch. Yeah. Mm. And what we've seen, we've sat in a venue is like, we like the human touch. And we've seen people walk out because they're not getting service. Yeah. The worst service you'll get in any venue is when it's dead because the staff is like, oh, there's nobody here. I'll go exactly, clean. exactly. Or when it's busy, no one can get you, right? We eliminate that completely because you can still place your order. Um, so, the, but everybody we talk to, including yourself, it's like, wait, I can walk into a place, sit down, work, place my order, pay, walk out, and never really have to talk to anybody. The customer actually wanted that in a lot of places. Because if I'm going to a place just to eat and drink, I'm not going there for that. <laughs> like, yeah. If you see Laith around or myself, don't talk to us. Somehow yeah. make it work. <laughs> but now venues are saying, I have my headphones that. on. Exactly. I'm doing this. Exactly. But how often? I've done this. I've gone to a coffee shop. I'm working. I'm like, okay, I'm hungry. I look up. I don't see anybody. I go back to work and I forget to order. Yeah, lost right. revenue. Exactly. Yeah. We eliminate that completely. We've had a venue tell us they estimate they lose about 10,000 dirhams a night on, you know, on a okay night, not a super busy night of people not, oh, sorry, on a busy night, not on a slow night of people not being able to place an order. Mm. If I go to the bar, that's 15 minutes I have to wait. If I move, I'm going to lose my seat and I don't want to lose uh, it. And the staff can't get to me. So I'm just not going to order. Sure. With this, you get rid of that completely. We had an experience with a, you know, an older gentleman, you know, I'd say mid to late fifties. He still had an iPhone four, a model would even think anybody still had, right? So it's a tiny little screen. Yeah. And he said, I like, I like the idea, but I like the human touch. But what we noticed with him is over the week of him kind of using it, he started kind of calling the staff to come over because, you know, they weren't coming over uh, that much. And then he started placing his orders through the platform and talking to the staff. <laughs> He's like, it's so just a lot more efficient. Touch, yeah, exactly. yeah, it's a lot more efficient, but I can still keep that human touch. But I think that's going to be the responsibility of the restaurants. Again, it's the experience, yeah. right? Yeah. And it, you go, man, we, we just love to be entertained. Yeah. I think that's the new generation. And as the younger generation is even more exaggerated than us. You want to go somewhere, you want to have an experience. But that's the thing. Look, if I go to a venue and I'm talking with the staff and they're fun and they're cracking jokes, I'll come again. But that interaction that takes about 10 minutes, it means somebody else is not getting served. Well, no, no, unless no, they're paying a lot where they have a lot of staff. So with this, somebody new comes in, the staff talks and spends time with them knowing that, some, that other people can still place an order. So it allows for a better experience. Yeah, and that's I, that's, I think, exactly. Like, I'm just the way that I'm thinking about it. I don't think necessarily you're out to kind of reduce the staff. Not at all. What you're doing is just taking that energy and letting them as a restaurant experience place, focus on that, improve the customer service, the, the outcomes of the, you know, the interaction. Actually, it's, it's, it's the, the ultimate personalization. Because it comes down to what the customer wants. How much or how little content yeah. you want. And also improve the efficiency. Like the guy we talked about who was just standing at the top of the stairs. He's actually now being productive and making money for the for the venue, right? So they didn't fire this person. They said, okay, now we can move him somewhere where we can actually generate more money f- from this person. So instead of being a cost center, now they're a you know, profit center. Yeah. By the way, we need to just put it out. We're not gaining anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this sounds like a big, like, pat the back kind of situation, but... Call 188. <laughs> no, I don't know. Like, honestly, if there's any comments or any sort of thoughts, maybe that we're not thinking through. But honestly, we have no um, interaction with one. one. <laughs> we're just talking this through and it's just, I, I, I sound like we're kind of like, <laughs> you know, the witch doctor is kind of pulling us into his world, right? <laughs> no, but that's cool. That's a really smart idea, man. Thank you. But I think, look, scalability, right? Like, I think you're in a race right now. And are you prepared for that race? Because historically in business, obviously, not always the best idea comes out on top. No, of course. So how are you really, is that where your focus is right now to try to? Look, a lot of it has to do with big chunk of it is luck, right? You make a right connection somewhere, a right partnership. 
And we do have some very exciting partnerships that we're kind of working on at the moment if they come through. But do you think it's what, luck? You call it luck or you call it well, like- Well, some, some of it is luck. luck. Like, okay, so one of our, our uh, venues that we're dealing with, so we managed to become global suddenly just because somebody walked into one of the venues where we had our platform, used it, loved it, reached out. And because of them, now we're in, we have, we will be launching in Thailand, two venues in Greece and another uh, venue, depending if they open in Montenegro by, by next month. Would you consider that? I still, I don't think well, it's luck. It, it, it's, yes, you no. placed if, yourself if the, in that if situation. If the product wasn't good, they wouldn't have used it, right? But the fact that that person happened was ready. to walk into that venue and the product was ready and the product was <clears throat> at a good level, that like, they got excited about it. So it's a combination of both, right? I call that no. It, I, it just gives you a small little kick in, uh, in no the No luck. I say you create. No, honestly, you create your own luck. I think yes. that goes around life. Yeah. I always like people tell me like, oh, I ran into so-and-so. It was by chance and I created this and this and this positive things came out of it. That's not luck. I was just trying to be humble. No, you shouldn't. But that's what I mean. You shouldn't say humble. It's a hard work. We're trying to teach people it, it, lessons, it, it, man. Well, it's true. Look, I don't want people walking around and hoping for money to fall from the sky, right? Like you, you got to hustle. And that's that, the, that's the reality of you know, when you're trying to do your own thing. You got to work around the clock. There is no weekends, there's no time off. And but you still gotta be able to remember you have a family and all this. And so your, it's a your background is is it tech or it's what's your So no, my background is, is marketing and advertising and you know digital and that kind of sense. But I have always been uh, a tech geek and tech mm. side. I, I like to say I know enough about technology to be dangerous. So when I'm sitting down with tech people, if you're trying to bullshit, <laughs> I, I know you're trying to bullshit, you know, and I can I can get online and kind of find solutions and say, Well, let's see, you're trying to bullshit me. Um, but I also know when, how much or how little I know. Mm. So, so it allows me to kind of think creatively because I'm not thinking of the limitations. I'm just kind of going nuts and then sit down with people who really know what they're doing. And, and that's where we're lucky. We have a very, very solid, strong team who are, you know, they're not just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And I won't think outside the box. Mm. They will challenge me. I will challenge them. And, you know, our, our CTO is this brilliant French guy, despite it despite the fact that he's actually French. We're <laughs> <laughs> That's a little jab at our French fellow. Me and Leith have no issues, Marwan. You can send him all the hate you want. Yeah, Quebecois versus French. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it's like, well, it, it's a little bit hard. It's better to do this. I'm like, well, look at these guys. They managed to do it. And that, that eggs him on and kind of uh, takes him to do. But he will come back to me and say, okay, I have a better solution or there's something that's new that we, uh, and interesting that we should kind of try. So knowing a little bit is you, you got to know a little bit of everything that's within your business. Yeah. But you got to also remember, okay, somebody knows more about this than, than I do, yeah. you know, and try a lot of people talk about innovation, but they want to stay within other people have done this. So this is safe. Mm. Otherwise, it, if, if, it, if it can be done, they would have done it. Otherwise it can't be done. Yeah. And that drives me nuts. I'm like, well, then how do you say innovation? You got to, even if it's a dirty kind of bandaid solution, do it and then figure out, okay, now how can I tweak it? How can I make it better? And, and that's what we do. When you're doing startups, you can't say everything has to be perfect and shiny. You got to make not. mistakes. You got to put you something You got to get at it. Yeah, exactly. You got to get at it. But is it like, again, now I'm just trying to break down the dynamics. So until you, did you deliberately come together with these partners? Like this guy is the CTO, this guy is the marketing guy, this guy is this, or was it just, a, as you called it, dumb luck? No, that was very deliberate. So there is the co-founder of myself and my partner, Giles. Um, we used to work together and we actually ran a, a streaming service. So we built it. And the guys we brought in are basically where our tech team before. Mm. So the CTO and, and the VP of engineering. So we already knew everybody's strengths and stuff like that. And Giles and I, we sat down, we put this together and we said, okay, we want to bring these guys on board. Um, we said, happy to pay or kind of bring them on board as sweat equity. Uh, and they really believed in the idea. These guys are brilliant the stuff that they do and they have a you know security background and backing background so hardcore security whatever we want to do the first thing they say no security security which yeah. drives us nuts but it makes sense for, of course no but that, i think those are the investments that you do or the sacrifices that exactly. you make up front to yeah. gain at the back end exactly. because look man we're all i don't know about everyone else man i'm sure you're the same way i hate the fact that you're giving so much every time you subscribe to something or you and it's like everyone's just out there setting cookies, seeing everything that you do. It's quite annoying, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I think that breakup is happening soon. I, th I think people are sick of it, you know, and all the manipulation that's going on. We're talking about the political. What's the name of that movie on Netflix? You watch it? Which one? The one that was like about how the, the, uh, they kind of like market or promote a different kind of uh election campaigns whatever and they used and facebook and what's the name of that movie man anyways it's gonna come up late is gonna do 
and during the podcast. So whatever it's called, he's going to put it on the screen. But anyways, it spoke about that. Like, And what, what they did was they targeted campaigns to people that they seen were on the fringes yep. of, am I voting for Trump or am I voting for... The great hack? Exactly. The great hack. The great hack. Yeah. Uh, and what they did is they targeted ads to those specific, so they checked your demographics, your behaviors, the videos you're watching, blah, blah, blah. It was a big, huge controversy. And they did one in, in where was it, Trinidad? Where they actually influenced the outcome of the election, oh, yeah. which is extremely yeah. wild. Yeah. So what they did was, is like, uh, one of the candidates is a, is a black candidate. The other was an Indian heritage ca- uh, candidate, but also from Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, and then they they targeted, they created a no voting campaign, so just people don't go vote. Yeah. But then at the end, they knew that the Indians would be told by their parents, go and vote for this person. Yeah. And then they ended up winning. Like they swayed it, which is just wild. Yeah, people don't realize how much they actually get manipulated on a daily basis. Oh, well, that's it. And they don't want to admit that they actually get it's advertising. Manipulated. Isn't that yeah. advertising in its that, uh, in its that, core that's principle? Our, yeah. That's a business I come from, unfortunately. <laughs> No, but it's cool. I think, look, I think it's cool. You're just, by placing ideas in people's mind, maybe it's things that they wanted to think about. They didn't know that they liked, right? Like, I don't, I, there is an element of manipulation, but there's an element of kind of giving the person what they wanted. You're not forcing someone to do something. Yeah. You're just kind of placing that, in, that inception thing. Yeah. The Leonardo DiCaprio thing. You put the thought. But that's, it could get dangerous. It can be very dangerous. Well, look, I think things like campaigns, yeah, shouldn't be done on that in that way. I agree with that. Like, I think that's just... Yeah, like, where do you draw the line? Well, advertising, if you're selling me a, a bottle of Diet Coke, I'm, I'm accepting you do some, like, placement or whatever. I'm fine with that, right? Yeah, but look, advertising in general is not about... You, you want to create... You look at milk. Milk was, was suffering at one point, and they came up with the gut milk. Orange juice said, okay, well, milk replaces now in the, in the morning, so we're going to actually take over the, the evening. You got to have the vitamin C. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they're trying to try and sell you something and people start to believe it that, oh, this is for my health. No, you know, the, the sugar versus fat. None of it is really based on scientific fact. It's, it's all sponsored by the you know, sugar industry or this industry or the meat industry. Yeah. And they're selling it as fact. And that's where the, the, the problem, you got to yeah. you know, make sure you control some of it. Like I said, again, traditional advertising. If you're selling me a Diet Coke, as long as you're not trying to sell it to me as a health drink. Yeah. Okay, I'm fine. Which it used to be. Like something well, else. But, <laughs> but we're slowly, and I hope we continue, and even things like milk and things like vitamin C, I think we're all now slowly starting to understand that it's not that healthy, and the amount of sugar in, 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 orange, in a glass of orange juice, and the issues with, with cow milk, like cows and consuming a milk that's designed for another ant. Like, yeah, so it's just, but I think we're learning. But I think that's also part of the responsibility of the person absorbing the information. Yeah. No? There's a combination of the but two. We, we are lazy to a certain extent. If I get information that looks, it, it's packaged nicely, I, I want to believe it. Not because it makes sense, because I want to and I don't want to work hard to kind of learn the information but everything's myself. available for you now, no? Like you have the internet available at your fingertips. Yeah, but let me ask confirm. you. The, the problem with that is there's so much information on the internet, but the right and the wrong information. Most people will go to the same sources. So if I'm a right wing or a left wing, I will go to a right or left wing media. I won't look at the others. And I'm being given information that I already kind of had in my mind just to tell me, yeah, you're, you're right. Re- reinforcing exactly. whatever you're So it's not real thinking. research. It's just, you know, you're being told the same thing and you're like, oh, see, I was right the whole, the whole time. Yeah. You're just justifying the thoughts exactly. of the person. What do you what do you think? Leith is like, what the hell? Hmm. What the hell's going no, on? what I struggle with is not that. Information is there, yeah, okay, good, fun. Don't eat sugar. You're not supposed to have sugar. You're not supposed to you know drink alcohol or smoke a cigarette, whatever, whatever vice you have. How do you stop doing it? You know you're not supposed to have sugar. That it's the discipline. We lack discipline. As an individual, you lack discipline. You know what you need to do. I think, look, I think there's enough information. But that's that's what I struggle myself. I'm not talking about everybody else. Is that? Absolutely. We I all know struggle. I'm not supposed to have sugar. Yeah, we all struggle. I see a Snickers bar and I, <laughs> I'm going to have, I'm going to have that nine out of 10. I'm going to have that Snickers bar. But it's a choice you decided to make. You have the information. Okay. If I have this, this is a possible side effect, but it's, I decide to actually do it. Yes. There's a bit of addiction to it because your brain real of sugar, but it's an informed decision. If you make an informed decision, it's your choice. It's fine. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, look, th- those kind of manipulations or advertising, whatever you want to call it, right? At the end, I still think that there is some form of responsibility to a certain degree. Obviously, targeting 
advertising how they used to when we were kids, right? With cornflakes and cereals yep. and full of N- Nutella for breakfast. Packed, oh. for, exactly, packed <laughs> with sugar. That's just, that needs to stop. And I think it's already kind of coming to, to so. that place. Yeah. Right, but not, I think there people is, people are more conscious nowadays. Well, this is that, it. Yeah. It becomes a part of your responsibility as an individual, at least especially as an adult, to be slightly informed. The information is there. It's not like you gotta afford an Encyclopedia Britannica now, right? It's pretty much whatever seventy percent, eighty percent of the world's population has access to some form of internet, right? Again, yeah, you know. Maybe those fact, those fa- I don't know. Maybe you can fact check you that. Fact check. You know, fact, <laughs> fact check that. But I'm not sure. Like I, I would imagine something like that. I'd be actually. That's an interesting fact check. How much of the world's population actually has access to internet? Let's say once a week, because you got to take in cafes and stuff. Because some think that, access. Yeah. Yeah. I think once a week, twice a week. Man, remember we were kids. I used to go blind for for like. You think five it's more months. than fifty percent? Oh population? yeah, I, I, without a doubt. I've seen like I. I I lived in Nigeria. I've been all around our region. I've been all around Africa. It's available. Cafes, internet cafes are available. Yeah. Uh, most yeah. people have phones. Now most people have like an, an older iPhone, which gives you access to a certain yeah. degree. I think I, I would say, f- I'd, I'd wow. feel comf- comfortably say 60%. Again, I'm putting it out there. I'm, I don't care. I'm putting this one out there. I'm, I'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm taking that challenge. I'm taking that challenge. But yeah, man, I don't know. Like, again, we, we so we, we went on this tangent because of your your advertising marketing background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I was very aware of what I was kind of doing, the marketing advertising, that what we do. I looked, I have friends of mine who are in medicine. My brother, the physicist, you know, my friend's brother was kind of working on cancer research. And I look at advertising. I'm like, we stress a lot more, work a lot harder. You know, divorce rates are incredibly high. We work till three o'clock in the morning. For what? <laughs> Try and get you to buy something you don't actually need yeah. versus someone who's trying to cure cancer. You know, but what I always talk, because I work with universities and students in advertising, you have to hate yourself just a little bit for this industry. And it's an <laughs> obsession. You either love it. And once you love it, you kind of enjoy it. I liked advertising because you have to learn about a lot of different uh, disciplines and, and businesses and all that kind of stuff to understand how to do a campaign for them. Mm-hmm. And it's never the same thing. Right, You're, it's always a new challenge or different things. So it, sure. it's a lot of fun for us. Um, however, if you're looking at effectiveness of advertising, it's not the most necessarily the most creative because you might remember an amazing campaign doesn't make you want to buy the product, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. To make it effective, it's about keeping it in the back of your head and not realizing you actually want this product. Remember, there was a brand in uh, in Montreal called uh, Black Label. It's a, it's a beer. Mm. They had beautiful campaigns you know, black and white photography, they be- became so good and so iconic, they actually had proper, you know, the, uh, set up for their photography and kind of showing off their work. People love them. Just nobody drank the beer. <laughs> they just like, they like the brand. This yeah, they, cool they brand. like the photography. Yeah. They like the, you know, the advertising, they just don't like the beer. Interesting. Yeah, I've always looked at marketing, advertising, branding. It's, it's life life, and, and art come together. Yeah. At, at a perfect. So you had your your fair share of advertising world. As very well, right? very small stint, three years. Um, enough, worked in an agency. To understand it though. Yeah, yeah, and it's always sitting with with the creative people, and you know the brief comes in, and it's like let's go, let's go, let's go. That I, I know what you're talking about. That experience where it's fun for for the team on yep. board. Um, but then when it all comes together, and you actually translate the thoughts and the ideas into a you know a thirty second video or one poster. And it hits it right on the spot. It's it's an amazing feeling. It is. It's an awesome for, for, experience for the people who are actually doing it. Yeah, you, doing you it. feel like you've created something. Not you gave that. life to something. That's not just art for the sake of what's in my head, but it, it's functional art in a mm. way. But like you said, there there is things from as back as the eighties when we were kids, nineties. There are ads that are still stuck in your head. Of course, certain certain things that are very iconic. Yeah. That till today you, you hold these dearly to yourself and to your identity. Yeah. Without knowing. Who worked on that and how was it developed? Do you say you hold on dearly or is it like just subconsciously ingrained like an imprint? It's, it's a, you get that warm, fuzzy feeling True. out of it. Associate it brings you back thought, to yeah, some thought. Yeah. yeah. Impact of advertisers. Yeah. So you, I'm a, like, again, just to kind of, again, bring it all back together. I'm assuming you still use a lot of that skills in what you're doing right now. Or were you more B2C when you were in advertising, you were cared about the end user or is it all 
in so, the same bucket anyways. It, a lot of it was B2, uh, B2C two when I, in advertising, but we did obviously B2B with a lot of kind of businesses. But you do need to bring that in. There's a psychology for how people kind of interact with things, how, how to build the platform and the interactions for people to come in. Because if the interface doesn't make sense, if my, uh, my experience using the platform doesn't make sense, isn't comfortable, I'm not going to use it, right? That, that becomes a fail. Even though the solution is something I need, if I'm not comfortable using it, it fails. And that, my part, my background in advertising and in digital comes into play here. Mm. How can I make this experience very easy, intuitive? I come in, everything just makes sense. The first time I open it, doesn't matter how old you are. I know exactly where to go, where to press and how to kind of uh, place an order. And getting that feedback from people and how they use it. That's all coming from my experience uh, in, in advertising and digital. So now if, if someone sees this and they're like interested to un- learn a bit more potentially for their business or whatever, you have a website you can pull people to? Opala.com. O- uh, so it's O-P-A-A-L-A.com. That's it. We're going to yeah. put that also somewhere there. Uh, but yeah, man, Marwan, like honestly, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, super informative. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. You, you know how much I, I like the idea. I really, really do. And I think uh, there is a place for it. It's just going to be the race, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, look, at the end of the day, you need competition to make you improve. Of course. Definitely. Monopoly is an issue, and that's what's happening. But I'm, I'm sure that you're you're going to get at it. So I'm looking forward to, it. to start seeing it and experiencing it. And uh, Laith? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> just making sure he's still here. <laughs> As we're saying bye, I don't, this guy's like, <laughs> you with me? You with me today? What do you mean? I carried most of the conversation. Oh, that's good, man. That's <laughs> you mean he's been watching this episode? No. <laughs> he's Thank still thinking guys. about the cold weather. I know, man. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Subscribe, like, share. Appreciate it. Thanks, Marwan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure.